This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Do this. Write code for the random index function so that it returns a random index from the list. Okay. Um, does this do anything right now, though? I'm going to hit run. Ooh, it does. Let's see. Top 50 of undefined. Ah, so we're outputting a string here of undefined. Okay. 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 So random index list. Write code of the, so that it returns. All right. So what do we need here? We need to be outputting a number. That much I know. Now, what will the number be equal to? I'm going to have head over to math and kapow. Hopefully you remember this. We've seen it before. It's random number. And what we need, though, is a variable. So I'm going to create a variable. Blop. And I'll call my variable rand, R and D, I guess. And what do I want it equal to? Well, I need it equal to a random number. Now, don't do this because, students, I've seen this. Boom, random number, 1 to 10. Cool, let me return rand. All right, I am done. No, 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 no. Because it has to be a random number that returns a random index, not just a random number. Now, what is an index? An index is a, a signifier of a point in an array or in a list. So we are going to have 50 state, oh, movies? Sure, movies. Now, the index of each of these, Kill Bill, for instance, this would be index zero. I know it says one, Rich Flex, index one, Creep In, index two, because things are indexed at zero. So now when I head back over to my code, I can't just return any number 1 through 10. I need to know the length of the list. I need to know how much stuff is in there because I get a return of random number that is contained within it. So I'm going to do list.length, and we've seen this before, right? Variable string.length, you can do list.length as well as shown here. Except, except the length of a list is always going to be one more than we need. So I'm going to subtract one. And that's because if there was a list of three things and I did list.length, the length would be three. But think about it. The indexes of that list, even if there were three things, for instance, this would be zero, one, and two. So the length, when I do this, would return the number three. But zero, one, and two would be the indexes because indexes start at zero. So that being said, if I want to return an index, I need to start at zero, get the length of my list, and subtract one. Now that is part uno. We got that down. Now what? Update the value of the variable index with call to random index. When the program works correctly, this program should print a random tracks information from both of the Spotify 50 lists. Oh, interesting. So this is hard to see, so I'm going to go into text mode. Wow, guys, it is still hard to see. All right, I'm going to zoom out. All right, random array. Assign a value to the variable index using a call. Oh, okay, so right here we have index, and it wants me to give it a value. Now, I could do index equals, and now I'm going to call my random index. And what am I going to pass here? Well, my list. What list, though? I guess since we know all of these lists or we're supposed to know, yes, they're all going to be the same. And I know they're all the same because they're all from the same data source. So all of it is coming from here or the other or the other data source. But regardless, it's going to have the same number of content, right? It will have the same length, track name, artist, position, code. So worldwide artist, artist, position, right? So track name artist position, if we have data of track names, I don't know how many there are on this list, 50, position 50 or however many. So we can use any of those lists. So I'll just do track list. And now that should give me an index that I can use. Boom, boom, boom. Now, if I wanted to be fancy about it, I don't technically, I can do the definition and the assignment right there. Sweet, tricky. Looking good. Onward.